Greetings YouTube and welcome to the Blue Corner. Today I'm going to be giving you guys a deck profile. And it's going to be on... Super Fighting Robots Gadget Spam. What is this exactly? Well, it's just my take on an ultimate offering gadget deck, aka offering gadgets, in which you are doing your typical gadget plays, but you also have a secondary win condition in the form of ultimate offering. Should your win condition go off, you're pretty much going to be in a powerful position because you will have a series of powerful rank 4 siege monsters that have pretty good effects, and this deck is just only going to get better and better as more rank 4s come out. Next booster set, we're getting basically a blue gadget, Hidden Arsenal 6. We're getting a rank 4 version of Alan's Justice Catastrophe, and getting a form of Aaron and so forth. So this deck is pretty potent and it's very fun to play. I think it would actually be one of the better decks to run in that format when the ban list hopefully slows this game down. As for what I am currently running, it is a 41 card deck with some questionable choices, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, in an offering gadget deck, you're going to be running a playset of each gadget who, upon being normal or special summoned, you can add one gadget of another color from your deck to your hand. Let's see, how does it go? Green searches out red, who searches out yellow, who searches out green, and yeah, you just summon it, you get a search. More often than not, your search is going to go through because your opponent never wants to waste such a bunch of tribute or a compulsory evacuation device on a gadget. It does suck though when they get hit by Effect Veiler, Phoenix Chain, or Forbidden Jalice, because you really do want those searches to go off. You don't want to really draw your gadgets, you want to thin out your deck with your gadget effect searches. Green is your beater, he's 1400, which, yeah, it's a, um, it's pretty funny to call a 2400 monster a beat stick, but there are those times where you're just going to be punching it with your gadgets. If you happen to get multiple gadgets out on the field, then you just simply overlay them to make a rank 4 why this deck is so good, because it can make rank 4s very easily. Alongside our gadgets, I am running the Machina engine of 3 gear frame, who will search out 2 fortress and 1 cannon. Gear frame's effect activates only with his normal summon, but he's an 1800 beater who can equip to another machine to prevent him from being destroyed once. Fortress. Fortress. You pitch 8 levels worth of monsters from your hand to special summon it from the hand of the graveyard. If he's destroyed by battle, you pop a card. If your opponent targets it with a monster effect, you discard something from their hand. He's actually very good. Cannon is just used as discard fodder for Fortress, as he is level 8. Then, I am running Triple Card Card D. This card helps you with your advantage. Basically, it's a nice plus one for the cost of your turn. It gets you close to your setup of having like MST, you have your ultimate offering, getting some monsters. It's just helpful for digging through your deck, and it's a level two machine, so if you happen to have a card card and a fortress in your hand, just pitch them and summon the fortress from your graveyard. So it's rather useful even in that sense. I know this card isn't for everyone, and if you don't want to run it, there's some other cards you can run in its place, like another Machina Cannon. I only have one, so that's why I have just that one copy in there. For the non-machines, I'm running two Valor. Pretty straightforward, you need it in this deck. I might even take it up to three, take out the card card ease, put another Valor in, and put some other, some other cards in. Lastly, when Tech Photon Thrasher, you just special summon it, and you summon a gadget and you make an Xyz, or you special summon it. If your opponent has a Thunder King Ryle, they gotta negate it, otherwise you're just gonna beat over it. It's just a very nice one of card I've, that I've been liking in play. Then for the spells, it's pretty straightforward. You're running Triple Duality, Double MST. In a Machina and an Anti-Meta Gadget build, I would run Lance, but in here you want to get rid of back row because you don't want Torrential Tribute to ruin your play. So MST just kind of helps you get those out of the way. Then you just run your limited cards of Hole and the Trinity. I mean a Book and the Trinity. Afterwards, we got our traps. I'm running two Compulse, just chainable ones for removal. Venus Chain, more monster from the effect negation that, more importantly, keeps a big monster in place where they cannot attack. Because this deck doesn't really like big monsters. I've noticed that a lot. And then you've got the Solemn Brigade, pretty straightforward there. 
and you got double treasure tribute to reset the field and then this deck's namesake ultimate offering what this card does is for the cost of 500 life points you get to normal summon or set a monster during your main phase or during your opponent's battle phase so the ideal play is you pay 500 life points with ultimate offering to summon a gadget in addition to your normal summon which you get a search for another gadget and you pay 500 to summon the gadget and you just kind of loop there and build up a field of gadgets and that field becomes a bunch of rank fours and basically if this card goes off and your opponent does not have an answer to it you should win because the monsters you're going to make are going to put your opponent in a very precarious situation ultimate offering is comparable to future fusion in a gadget deck if you, again if this goes off you should not be losing you should be winning and speaking of the rank wars and such, we're gonna go over my extra deck. First, my synchros. I'm only running a couple. Scrap Dragon and Stardust in the event that I'm somehow able to make a level 8. I don't know, I just kind of threw them in there. I'm gonna probably cut them out for 2 Gear Giganto X when Return of the Duelist comes out. One Ally of Justice Catastor and one of Magical Android for when I have a gadget in the mailer. Catastor just blows shit up. Android is in there as a 2400 feeder. Why this over folk, uh, over Hyper Librarian? Because the life points that you get off of Android are very useful. They let you get more uses out of your ultimate offering. Paying 500 life points really adds up with this deck. You could lose potentially up to 2,500 life points or more with an ultimate offering play. As for the Xyz, one copy of Photon Popperative to put defense monsters into attack. It's a very, very, very good card. One Gemini Pearl, he's your strongest monster without an effect and so forth. One steel to remote. This card is good in here right now. You can if you can protect this, it can almost single handedly get you an opportunity to win against Chaos Dragon because you can kill their Pulsar, Dark Flare, Sork, BLS, and a slow red eyes darkness metal dragon summon. He is nineteen hundred though, so Trooper can kill it and a lot of other monsters can kill it. So you gotta be a little bit careful when trying to explain the thing, but still it's a very good card that matchup. One Kaji Kaji Dragon G just is a double attacker. Double Mind Stroke. I feel that one is not enough. You can make it very easily and it's very nice having one to use as a chump blocker and the other one to use as a book effect. You never know when you're gonna be able to put a big monster into defense and just beat it over. One number 39 Utopia and one number 39 Chaos Utopia Ray. He's just your go-to rank 4 guy if you don't want to use Pearl. Utopia Ray is very useful as you can get his effect off. I've had a lot of opportunities to put myself at like a thousand life points or less through Ultimate Offering and then I just summon Utopia Ray. I make Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon zero attack and just a feed over for 4,000 damage and then you just go from there. This guy can win you games if you play it right. The last and most powerful card in this deck is number 16 Shockmaster who is available only as a Shonen Jump Alpha promo card which means you have to be subscribed to that site in order to actually get this. Uh, as far as I know you can't get this via online retailers like Troll and Toad. I've looked. Maybe someday but I don't know. But anyway. Shockmaster requires 3 level 4s but in this deck it's not too hard and his effect is ridiculous. Once per turn you detach material and you call either monster effects, spell cards, or trap cards Neither player can use either one until the end of your opponent's turn, so it's like a cold way for monster effects or spell and traps. And ideally, you get two of them out, and then you call monster effects and spell cards, or actually spell cards first, then monster effects, and then you just use your traps to keep these guys safe, and you lock your opponent out. It's a very brutal lockdown, and you get three uses out of this guy before he becomes a 2300 feeder. Yeah, basically, if you get an ultimate offering off of this sizable hand, you're going to put two of these out, plus a utopia or something else, and you just got your opponent in a real bad bind. I also did have a side deck for this, but I'll have to change it now that Winus went that. I did not expect them, honestly, to get first place, so my side kind of isn't really fully prepared for them, although it's pretty generic. It's and it's pretty good against a lot of stuff. You got Shadow Mirror for Insector and Dark World, Macro for those decks, plus Chaos Dragon, Prison because I'm not maining it, MST to get rid of Decree, Soul Taker, Dyna, Max. It's just a pretty straightforward side deck that I run in here. But yeah, 
that is the deck. I hope you liked it. Thank you all for watching. Until the next time. Take care.